I am blue, da boo dee da boo die, da boo dee, da boo die, da boo dee da boo die. Time for the blue section. <laughs> Starting with lesson 13. Memorizing the course 2, face the challenge of the tricky New York course. Alright, this will be a much more di uh, difficult uh, learn the track. Uh, 98 was flirting with Disaster Cisco. 99 Welcome was uh, Gear Jammer. This lesson takes place in central New York City. A long straight on the main street ends in a 90 degree corner. Take two slow laps around this course. As before, you'll be given plenty of time, so consider it a laid back tour of the city. But don't be too complacent. Contact with the course boundaries means automatic disqualification. You'll be tempted to floor the accelerator on the long straight, but make sure you bring your speed down enough to take the upcoming 90 degree corner. Just as you learned in lesson 11, remember the surrounding buildings and other signs that signify where you need to start braking. Also, be sure to drive up on the curb on the corners. Once you can create a mental picture of the course in your head, you'll be close to your goal. By pushing the R3 button on the right analog stick, you can, if you wish, turn off the ideal line indicator. Once you get used to it, try racing with this indicator turned off. Best of luck. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, one, new course, New York. New York streets. Uh, two, we're driving a, a JGTC NSX for this, like a GT500 class NSX for this, so a big jump in uh, car. And three, we can turn off the racing line. Now that Vicky has told us what, how to do it, and I have done that. So, it's time for two laps around New York. So first off, for two slow laps to uh, get an idea of the track layout. Just kidding, I'm sending it. This is not going to be gold, by the way. This is another... This is the one that's actually pretty tough. Gold. Need two really good laps. Not quick, but also pain to drive. I don't have it. problems with driving it. Oh, he dicks! That problem... The, I do have a problem with stopping it, apparently. As in, I got on the brakes way too late. I passed the 100 sign thinking it was the 200 sign, and my breaking point is the 100 sign. So, um, whoopsie doopsie. Anyways, yeah, New York Street's course. Oh god, I forgot about that curb. You do not want to hit that curb on that second apex of that double left. It will throw you around. In the wrong direction. And then for our final section, we have a little roundabout here. That I am failing to navigate efficiently. Okay, that was a terrible lap one, but it's fine. We'll have a terrible lap two, and then we'll go and try to have a good two consecutive laps. This engine note do be strange sounding, yes. Kind of want to get a wide arc around, maybe not that wide, but a wide arc around that first hairpin to get a straight exit off on the second apex. Of course, New York circuit. Can't talk about Gran Turismo's New York without mentioning Forza's New York, since they were mapped in roughly the same area, with the front straight being around Times Square and having the same roundabout as the final corner. So. Either, either purely by coincidence, or maybe someone uh, working on Forza, one of the track designers working on Forza actually played GT4 Prologue, and they're like, actually, that's a good idea. Major differences between GT New York and Forza New York, though, are where the twisty bits are. The twisty bits here are on the northern part of the track, and the, in Forza, it's on the southern part of the track. 
course, that layout of New York was only in Forza 1. Forza 2 only got the short layout, which was just this front straight, the double hairpin, and then the run up to the uh, roundabout. Honestly, that's a better time than I expected from this first run. 317.8. I need to improve by over three seconds, but considering how bad that, especially that first lap was, that's not too bad. So, uh, let's a push. All right, so we are now within one second of the gold time. So, I did make, I know where I made my mistakes. So I just gotta clean those up. I was a little bit lazy around that first corner. Even with my PB right now. Turn the ghost on real quick. I think I'm in front of the ghost at least. be careful when cutting that right hander because that dip like causes so much understeer if you're not prepared for it even when you are prepared for it it causes a lot of understeer And slide like I did last time. Oh, that was a terrible exit. Missed the apex and it was slow. Alright, well, I'm faster on lap one, but not by, well, actually by more than I expected. Just by staring at the map and comparing my green dot to my past orange dot. Was a good run out. Go, go, go. And I'm actually breaking a little early for that turn. So, slow apex, but it's helping me get a straight exit. Don't know if that's actually helping me, but you know. Hit the inside wall on the right hand to hear my second lap PB. Or PB second lap. So maybe that'll help me gain a little time. I don't think this is going to be good enough for gold. Gonna need an immaculate run through the roundabout. And what I'm going to do is completely fuck up the exit, which is ruining the entrance to the final kink. And across the line, we got it anyways. Okay, cool. Absolutely botched the uh, the end of the roundabout, but overall that was good enough for gold. Not bad. Not the bad. But nice. Alright, well, there we go. We've learned the New York Street Circuit. <laughs> in a race car. I mean, it's not the first race car, because we drove the Lupo in the last lesson, but that was a very... very different race car compared to this one. You know, going from a very low-performance race car to a very, uh, one of the fastest cars in the world. <laughs> Pokemon boss encounter. <laughs> yes. Alright, lesson 14. Special cornering techniques. Practice taking a hairpin corner on the New York course. It's time for some uh, New York segments. What we got, Vicky? Welcome to lesson 14. 
This lesson takes place on a section of the New York street course where two 90 degree corners are positioned consecutively, creating a double apex hairpin corner. In this lesson, you'll practice high speed cornering on this hairpin. For double apex corners, it's best to treat the two corners as one. The racing line emphasizes corner exit speed. The trick is to ignore the first of the 90 degree corners and perfectly clip the second. This will result in the best speed possible for the upcoming straight. When you get a feel for it, try turning off the ideal line indicator. Good luck with this lesson. Yeah, all right, so now time to tackle that first hairpin in a much slower car with much worse brakes and handling. Can't wait to spend a while on this. It's gonna immediately turn the line off. Of course. Again, it, to me it feels like because there's no time limit on the two lap trial, it's like, okay, well, while the car choice is weird, it's like, okay, just take your time, kind of vaguely learn the layout. We'll have some later lessons to kind of help you better learn uh, specific sections or something. Of course, they didn't really do that with the orange section like I thought they would, so. You know. Anyways, that was a not good first run, but okay. Oh, maybe they chose, like, the NSX because it's like, here's a very grippy car. There are walls everywhere, so, like, at least the car turns well so you can hopefully avoid the walls on your first attempt with the uh, previous, like, as you learn the course. I forgot to turn the line off, although it doesn't matter. I'm not using it as a reference anyways. Hey, there we go. Much better. Move. I did it. I saved the world. That I mean, I took the first hairpin at New York at a reasonable pace. MTV. Just MTV logos everywhere. This is Times Square, after all. Alright. Next up, we're heading left around our rectangle. Time for lesson 15. Taking 90 degree corners on a street course. Learn how to tackle these 90 degree bends at high speed. Oh boy! Let's go. Let us go and let us be told what to do by Vicky. Welcome to lesson 15. Once again, this challenge is set on the New York street course. This time, you'll learn how to take single 90 degree corners at high speeds. City courses are composed almost entirely of 90 degree corners, so this is your chance to learn how best to take them. The basic line is the standard out-in-out -out trajectory, which you've already learned about. However, in a city course, the boundaries are guardrails and other obstacles, so you'll have to take the bull by the horns to get full advantage of the breadth of the course. Things get even more tricky when you exit a turn with the accelerator floored because of the extra speed. In professional racing, it's crucial to use the entire course width to your advantage. Practice repeatedly until you can precisely follow the ideal line. Focus on taking a smooth line that goes right up against both the inside and the outside boundaries of the course. Now, best of luck with the lesson. Yeah. All right, Spoon Civic, let's go. Cool car. So, basically turns two, three, and four here in New York. Let's go. Spoon! go. Broke a little early. It's fine. Use the uh, techniques that Vicky described, except very poorly. As in, I'm using the techniques very poorly. Vicky described them well. And Miss Gold by only two tenths. Only a quarter second somehow. Alright, well, let's go again faster this time. Okay. Um, well, that's how you don't do that. Now, 
let's do do it. There we go, much better run. Didn't actually uh, hit the wall on the exit. Hit the rev limiter just a little bit. Hit it approaching the turn, but it's very marginally faster than actually uh, shifting up the third. And there we go, got the gold. Easy. We scooped up that gold trophy with this spoon civic. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha. Ah. Please laugh. Now we have unlocked the spoon civic. The gold. Thank you, thank you, SunDisk and, and Cisco. Okay. Next, high-speed braking cornering. How to handle corner one of Fuji International Speedway. So, uh, we're leaving the streets of New York, and we're heading back to Fuji. And we're finally going to tackle turn one. And it's extremely heavy braking zone. Welcome to Lesson 16. This lesson takes place on the Fuji International Speedway, with which you should now be very familiar. This time, you'll learn how to correctly enter corner one after the straight. You've already learned how to handle high-speed braking in lesson 11. Well, this time around, you'll practice braking at the right point needed to clear corner one. In the lesson with the stopping area, all you needed to do was apply the brakes. However, this time, you have to take a corner after you brake, making the timing that much more difficult. Try approaching the task in this order. First, begin by determining how low your speed needs to be to take the corner. Then, once you've determined the entrance speed, you can find the point at which you need to begin braking to reach that speed at just the right point. If you look closely, you'll notice that corner one is in fact two small corners. Notice that this makes for a unique racing line. Good luck. All right, here we go. Also, although, although, I have to say, Vicky, not really too familiar with Fuji yet. Most of our tests lessons have been done on the front straight and like the exit of the final sweeper. But, you know. Anyways, in our knees, Mosey. Let's go. So we're starting right at the exit of the B chicane. We'll actually have to go around the full final turn, which is completely flat out in this car. And in most cars. This is the only reason why this lesson icon is a square instead of a triangle. Because we're technically doing multiple corners, even though there's only one corner that matters. Break right here. That was too late. That was too late. No! Damn it. Alright, a little earlier than that. Just a skosh. Let it go. Okay. Well, I know where not to break. So, uh, got that squared away. Get a big high speed approach to the heavy braking zone. Gonna break as soon as the, uh, darker, the rubbery patch of road appears, which is almost perfect, and there we go. Gold. Smooth. It wasn't the best run, but hey, it's good enough. Let's go. Very good, very good. I'm actually going to save this replay. Use this for the, uh, the Z-Tune, Fair Lady Z. The ZZ, if you will. All right. Get up, please. 
Really Z Z tune Z thirty three Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z I like the stripes on the uh side. Oh boy. Alright, well uh next up is coffee break. Again, completely optional, but I'm doing it, so coffee break two. Knock all over the knock over all cones in a random pattern. Oh god, it's this one. I don't even remember how I figured this out. I just kind of went places and it worked. Now for the next coffee break. At this stage, 20 cones have been spread out across the gymkhana in the driving park. As before, the object is to touch all the cones as fast as possible. Firstly, just drive around any way you like. Once you've been around a few times, you'll get an idea of the position of the cones. Then you can work out the most efficient way of hitting them in the shortest possible time without having to double back on yourself. Enjoy your coffee break. Or you can be like me and just fucking hit the cones randomly and somehow it works out. So, uh... Well, here we go. We might be here a while. Because I don't remember how I did this. We'll absolutely be using the, uh... This camera, though. Fuck it. Uh, I can already tell you I definitely did not go this route. That is for sure. Oh, did I not even hit? I missed that cone. Wow, this is actually absolutely terrible. Good thing there's no time limit. Because this is this is atrocious. How am I missing? I'm like missing two cones. I know I straight up just missed one. Alright, where's that last cone? I see it. <laughs> I somehow got a silver. I have no idea how. Okay, uh, well then. Alright, now let's go for gold. Mmm, <laughs> I missed the last cone, damn it. That was gonna be like a 49 second run and I missed the final cone like a goddamn moron. Just whizzed by it. That was unfortunate. At least I have a vague route now. I'm honestly surprised at how efficient this route is. Keys. Just a, just a tiny keys. Enough for it to count. Oh, tiny keys, enough for it to count. Alright, and the last three over here. I went slower through this route this time, but there we go. I actually hit the flask. He <laughs> fumbled at the end zone. Yeah, I did that. Okay, I got it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We've cleared the coffee break. We got the legacy wagon. It's fine. Excuse me. Legacy Sports Tourer 3.0 R. Sport wagon. Thoughts on GT7's cone missions? Uh, I don't really remember. The only one I remember is like the tiny eight cone square that gave me hell times 12, but other than that, I don't really remember the cone missions. Oh boy, I do remember this lesson being a tough bastard, most because of the car. Time for some mid to high speed driving on a dirt surface. Practice your drifting techniques at high speed. This Ford Focus drives like balls. It is very oversteery. Maybe I can wrangle it better this time. Welcome to lesson 17. This lesson is the first outing on the dirt track for some time. You'll be practicing high speed cornering on the fast section of the Grand Canyon. You've learned that by tapping the brake as you turn, the car will begin to drift. By using the drift method, it's possible to turn the angle of the car without steering. 
Mastering this technique can lead to faster cornering. Begin to turn at the entrance to the curve and apply the brake. This causes the car to slip sideways and start to drift. Next, gradually accelerate and determine the amount needed to maintain the drift. If the back wheels slip too far and the car swivels beyond the intended direction, steer the car in the direction that the back wheels are sliding. This technique is called counter steering. Practice this acceleration and counter steering until you're able to control the drift at will. Best of luck with the lesson. And let me tell you, I'm not good at counter steering this focus at all. So uh, here we go. Quick straight run to a left and a right. 16 seconds for the gold. This will probably take several tries. We'll see how we get on here in the focus. Just gotta focus on this XD. Uh, yep, 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 there we go, there we go. That's the problem I have. It, it over, it over rotate. Okay, well. We haven't gotten the full GT experience yet with these times, but we're close. 0 .005 is almost a full GT experience. Ooh, that was good speed through the left. That was some less than good speed through the right. There we go did it. All it took was improving by like two to three hundredths every single run. <laughs> did it. Alright, fucking hell. Once I was able to like kind of control the focus, which was uh, like find that sweet spot with the, uh, the drift angle, which is not much, as well as with like throttle input and shit, we got her. Now we can use this car in the arcade mode. And we can move on to our next lesson. Lesson 18 has an exclamation point. Strategies for difficult corners. Look. Look. Look and learn. Learn how to find the clipping points on blind bins. We're going back to New York just by that description alone. I believe this is the uh, tight left, right, left. No, we're not. I forgot. There's another Welcome street course. To lesson 18. This lesson takes place on the tricky town course in Italy. It's difficult to envisage the proper line on blind corners with low visibility, but with this lesson, you can master the techniques needed to navigate such non-standard corners. When you're faced with corners that, in addition to having bad visibility, become sharper from mid-turn, it's hard to work out how to tackle them. When you enter a corner under such conditions, don't rush to take the line. Stay close to the middle of the course and get a good look at what lies ahead. The best thing to do is get back on the racing line and accelerate only after the track visibility improves. Attempting this halfway through the corner is bound to fail and won't improve your time. The trick is to wait and see how things pan out and near the end, accelerate correctly and reposition yourself on the racing line. Take care. Yeah, I forgot about Seat of the Aria. Also, we're driving a Honda Beat for this. Very nice. I also like how the demonstration just does not follow the, the painted line. Oh my god, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It never stopped oversteering. Okay. So close. Nose kind of hooked to the wall again. That was good, but it was a slow exit. Is it going to be enough, though? Yeah, there we go. Okay, just barely enough. Breaking news! Dun, dun, dun. That was kind of a bad run, but... Because <clears throat> I kind of stuck my nose in the inside wall. But I figured it out. We got it, so... All that matters. And we got the Honda Beat now. Love this little car. Love these key cars. Very cute. Very small. Very fun to drive. <laughs> Very nice. Alright, with that, another lesson. I think this is our last lesson of the blue section. I could be wrong. Actually, I think there's two more. I don't know. We'll find out. 
Anyway, it's time for lesson 19. Tackling a beginner's course. Learn the correct rhythm of steering on a beginner's course. Okay. We're going to the beginner's course. We're going to be driving a Lotus Elise. Judging by the car shown in the background. Welcome to lesson we 19. For this lesson, you'll be driving on the beginner's course in the driving park that you encountered in the first lesson. Of course, this time you'll be practicing something new, negotiating chicanes. Chicanes are small, opposing corners positioned on the track to force you to slow down. Your job is to complete two laps on this course as fast as possible through the chicanes positioned in the middle of the straight. You've had plenty of practice through small and large corners, so this time you'll need to work on taking the chicanes. See how well you can trace the ideal racing line. You'll do okay if you minimize steering from the entrance through to the exit and maneuver with a good rhythm. If you accelerate roughly or steer too hard during the chicanes, the car will handle poorly and you won't be able to follow the line. Remember the advice of the first lesson and keep your steering to a minimum. Best of luck. All right, I will try, Vicky. So yeah, our first uh, run at the uh, beginner's course with the the, the uh, backstretch chicane. Of course, is the only layout of this track that is actually used in GT4. Never got to drive the chicane this version. Oh well. But here we go on our Elise Lotus Elise Sport 190. Nice for round turn one. Tackle the chicane for the first time. A little bit awkward. Don't hit the cone on the exit because that's an automatic fail. Oh, going very wide around the sweeper. Not hitting any sort of an apex or clipping point or anything. A 33.3 lap one. Hard on the brakes. Ooh. Curb kind of grabbed the car a little bit. Turned it more than I needed to. Really not taking that chicane well. Getting a very bad exit. I'm scared of the cone. Oh, and I'm gonna go into the grass and fail, damn it. Well, shit. The, the car gripping up on the curb keeps throwing me off. Like, the curb just grabs the fucking front of the car and just kind of... Yeah. It's very jarring. Although it would probably help with maintaining corner speed. Kind of want to stay off it as much as I can. Because of... Eh. All right, much better lap one than my first attempt. About a second faster almost. Unfortunately, completely missed the first corner. Eat, eat, eat. All right, the second lap is not going well at all. I won't go flying off to the grass in the exit this time. There we go. Okay. Beat the gold by over a second. Hooray. That was a very awkward lap too, but we got it. <laughs> Alright. There we go. We've tackled the beginner's course with the chicane. And we've unlocked the Lotus Elise. So arcade mode. We're completing lesson 19. It's had seven lessons versus six for the uh, previous two sections. Plus the coffee break. I believe this is our last lesson the blue sec or yeah blue section and it is so all gold in the uh, blue section we unlock the Mitsubishi I I do not like the look of this thing never really have it exists though nice work nice way you've completed the blue section now are you ready for the red section think you can handle it I think I can handle the red section Vicky we have one, two, three, four, five, six more lessons plus a coffee break to go. So, there's that. So, let's check our progress. Here it is 21 gold trophies out of 19 lessons and two coffee breaks. 
Driver score 28-36. Not the bad, not the bad. So next up will be the red section. Yeah. 